Hey, full time fans, time for overtime. Brought to you by Modelo. And we just saw the game. They were all talking about it. Mm-hmm. FSU, LSU, game of the week. A number of things really stick out towards, uh, to us. Sam, what sticks out to you? Uh, I think that this is Florida State's year. And Reese Davis has been saying it too. If not now, when? Mm-hmm. For Florida State, right? I mean, they, let's not forget, they were ready to throw Mike Norvell out of that seat a couple of years ago. And now he's gotten this team showing flashes last year, and it started in this, re, in this game last year with the one-point win, blocking the extra point field goal to win it. But this is a team that returns a lot, and it starts with the quarterback, Jordan you Travis. Right there. Yeah. He said that he was going to come back in December, and that set off. That was the catalyst for a lot of these players to come back. He's got a ton of weapons on the outside. He is a matchup nightmare with the re- with the receivers that he has. Um, incredible size as well. Um, and again, if not now, when for Florida State? That's my question. Yeah, I look at Florida State's uh, schedule, and it, it is a lot easier than no LSU. Doubt. Yeah. When you're in the SEC, you got to run through a little bit more of a gauntlet. But uh, I also look at LSU with who they have on their roster, and I think Jaden Daniels is a legit Heisman contender. The only question for him with me coming into the season is how is his downfield throwing going to be? One thing that isn't a question mark is his level. But being able to make these type of throws consistently is really what's going to separate him. Now, early on in the season, what we saw Jaden Daniels do frequently was go through his first progression and then be like, shoot, forget it, we out. Tuck the ball away and go and run and try to make something happen. Now, he's a special athlete, and he can make things happen with his feet, but he also has some very special uh, wide receivers around him. Now, what I'm going to be watching out for is LSU's offensive line versus FSU's yeah. defensive front. That will be an interesting matchup to see how the trenches are, but this matchup is a top-10 matchup that's going to give us a lot of answers with both teams on their capabilities. And then I guess my question to you, Sam, is which one of these teams do you see being in the CFP? I think Florida State will be in the college football playoff Mm. this year. And in part because I think that the ACC is, for lack of a better word, gettable this year. (laughs) And I think we're going to find out why on Monday. And this may be previewing a little bit of the game against Clemson and Duke. This is a very good Duke team, and I think Clemson has a lot of pressure on them. New quarterback kind of situation they're floating with there. Jordan Travis is a proven winner. He led the SEC in QBR last season. He also uh, was a huge leader, an emotional leader on this team, and was one of the huge reasons why all of these players came back. I think it says so much about him, not only to have the, uh, the complement of talent around him, to have – you listen to Mike Norvell talk about Jordan Travis. It, you, would have, you would think he's talking about Tom Brady. I mean, <laughs> that's how much trust he has yeah. in his quarterback to go out and win games. He has proven it, that he can do it, and he's got a lot of the same people around him this year. Listen to the name. Remember the name Johnny Wilson, wide receiver for Florida yeah. State. The dude is, what, 6'7", six, seven, six, seven, 240 pounds. Yeah. If he was to be in the NFL today, he would be the second tallest wide receiver in NFL history. That's the type of size that he has. And let me just rattle off the Florida State schedule to you because their next matchup is against Southern Miss. And then you got Boston College. Uh, they lost today. Then yep. you got Clemson. All right, that's the matchup that we're like, sure. it's a toss-up. Then you got Virginia Tech. Syracuse, Duke, Wake Forest, Pitt, Miami, North Alabama, Florida. Gettable. That is gettable when you talk about a schedule that they'll be able to get through. Because for LSU, it's different. You're going to be seeing teams like Alabama. You're going to be seeing teams that are really going to challenge you throughout the year. So I think LSU, if they can make it through that gauntlet, they're going to be one team that can definitely make a lot of noise um, at the end of this. Now, a a number of different matchups going on around uh, uh, the college football world is North Carolina versus Versus South Carolina. Yeah. That game wrapped up right before we went on air. North Carolina put him to work. 31 to 17, mm-hmm. the final in that game. Spencer Rattler yeah. still threw for 300 yards, but no touchdowns in this game. And I was curious to see what South Carolina could do after having such a strong finish at the end of last season. However, this game, they did not play well at all, Sam. No, and again, the question that we have been dying to get an answer to is when. 
Will South Carolina be able to stop the run? They have ranked in the bottom five of the SEC in each of the past five seasons in rushing defense. They did not prove that they could stop the run today. Drake May, I think, uh, kind of reminded everybody that, yes, he yeah. is that dude yeah. today. And I think uh, this is a North Carolina team that was without one of their huge weapons today. It was uh, – you saw Eric Church on the sideline wearing his jersey. Um, you know, th this is a team that's going to contend this year in the, the, in the ACC. The thing about North Carolina is their passing defense that everybody looked at. Is their yes. defense going to be able to do something? Well, that defense did well today. They had nine sacks. It's most in a game in the last 25 seasons. They pressured Spencer mm. Rattler on 19 of 52 dropbacks, mm -hmm. the second most he has faced in wow. his career. And then USC ended up beating San Jose State 56 to 28. USC drops another 50 burger. That's 122 points this season in the first two games. That is the most in school history 